Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to this amazing masterclass that I'm bringing to you in the comfort of your own home. We're going to be talking all about holiday hairstyles. And let's just face it, some of these looks you can do on a regular, but the holidays are coming, so we're going to glam them up. Super great. We're using all Redken today and hot tools done by very own hot tools. So I want to just dive right in here. So before I do that, I'm going to just kind of let you know of the flow of the day. We're starting right now and we're going till two. We are going to take a little bit of a break in the middle. So you will be able to order, you know, whatever you need for lunch. And, and then we're going to come back and dive right back into it. There's going to be a lot of great stuff going on. So what I strongly suggest is to grab a pen and a piece of paper just to take down notes. And by all means, I want to make this completely interactive as we're doing this. I want you to be able to send me any questions you may have, just like I'm sitting beside you in your very own living room. We can communicate and we can go along with this. I got a whole team behind me that can ask me and share those messages. Okay guys. So make sure to stay with me today and let's, let's chat all about this great holiday hair. So I'm going to dive right into it right now and we're going to get right into red all right so come come sit with me <laughs> I love this chair <laughs> all right so we're gonna be talking about uh, our Redken products that we are using today that some of you got in your press kit so we have right here we're gonna start off with our all soft Redken we got our shampoo conditioner and our heavy cream so I know a lot of you might be saying you have a lot of products at home. Maybe you're not interested in trying something new and I want to get into why this is so beneficial to you right now. All the all soft products have argan oil in them, which has been so refined. It is great for your hair and it's not going to leave a heaviness or residue on it at all. Everything from Redken is salon grade. So this means if your hair is already color treated, you don't have to worry the, P the pH levels in all soft and everything essentially from Redken is okay for color treated hair. So it's not going to do anything to your toners or any of your fashion colors. You're good. But what's great, I love this so much because we are entering our dry, cold season. So all soft, like I mentioned, has the argon oil in there. So it really helps to give that moisture, but it's like that clean moisture. It's the moisture that's not heavy, weighing anything down. You still get a lot of volume. My hair is pretty fine. So I still get that volume in there and I love it. So this is really, really helpful. It also helps with not getting static. A lot of us don't realize that static is actually caused by not having that moisture in your hair. So your hair is literally like reaching out, trying to get that moisture back. So you'll be able to maintain a static free hair style during the winter seasons while using our all soft shampoo and conditioner and the heavy cream. Come on, this is just a great treatment. So some of us are in lockdown again. Great time to treat the hair. Put it in, spend your day on the computer, whatever you need to do, throw it up in a struggle bun, nobody has to know. <laughs> and you look super cute. It actually kind of looks like a style anyways when you're treating your hair and you have it up in a struggle bun. So I say sport it, make sure if you take a picture to tag us in it because I love to see that stuff. And then you can wash it out later and you've just done a great treatment on your hair. So this is a great go-to. So now we're gonna jump right into our hairsprays. Now, I know that I probably have some stylists on here right now that are watching this. So I want to share the information about Redken hairsprays on here for stylists and non hairstylists because this is beneficial to you all. I know that you see that Redken always has these numbers on their bottles. And this is a really important thing to know. The number means something. <laughs> it's not just the way that they've made it in order. <laughs> it's not like this was the, the 23rd bottle of hairspray that was created. It actually means something. <laughs> it, it means of the hold factor. So if we looked on a big scale of zero being um, the hold of water, this would be 23 times the hold of water. And this is great to know just for yourself when you're picking out a hairspray when you walk into a chatter salon. And this is also great for hairstylists to make sure to share this information with your guests in the salon because this is really important important to know because you know there is a huge difference between the hold of a 23 and a hold of a 12 our fashion work 12 those are both differences and the 12 is 
clearly being a, a lighter hold hairspray. What's great about both these hairsprays as well, they have a humidity protection in them. So they can hold and withstand that humidity, the frizz, the frizz for our summer seasons for up to 24 hours. So this is a really great thing to know. And I have to tell you just a little fun fact, behind the scenes during fashion week, these were the most used hairsprays done. So we have our fashion work, uh, Force Roll 23, and our Fashion Work 12 and Guts 10. I'm gonna jump into Guts in like one quick second, but I just wanted to tell you that these hairsprays are definitely used a ton during Fashion Week. 12 is really great for having that light hold. It, you can also run your fingers through it and you can constantly keep layering it without it getting super stiff or crunchy. 23 is a great um, hairspray, the for, uh, Forceful 23. As soon as you spray it on, you do have that hold. Um, you're not necessarily wanting to run your fingers through it, so this would be something that you can um, pair together with that would work out well. As like an example, if you put your hair up into this great little half up uh, do, I have 23 right here to help hold down all those frizzies because I'm not going to be running my fingers through it. But I used 12 on the end so I can still maintain my wave. It's pretty cool. So now we're going to dive right into our Guts 10. Okay, so Guts 10 is also one of those uh, products that you must have, and this is going for every length of hair. Guts, if you read it on the bottle, it is a volumizer, but it actually looks like when you spray it out, it looks like you had hairspray and mousse, got together, made a baby, and it was Guts. Because <laughs> when you spray it out, it sprays out like a hairspray, but kind of froths up like a mousse. So it's a really great product to be able to use. And on the bottle itself, it's gonna tell you that it's a volumizing root spray, which it is. But I like to push the limits and try new things. And I'm gonna be sharing those tips with you today because this is a great prep for hair. So anyone out there that when you like freshly wash your hair and you go to try to style it and it's like super limp because it's almost like too clean, this is your go-to. So not only can you spray this in the roots, but you can spray it from mid length to ends as well. So, and that gives it that extra, that extra movement, um, grip, it can like have that pliability to be able to create another style. And today I'm going to show you that because I think this is so essential to know. I'm literally giving you hot tips straight from like behind the chair as a hairstylist and working behind the stage and scenes of fashion week or on set for different movie shoots or television shoots. These are things that we do. So as I'm going along, I'm going to be throwing out a lot of those tips and tricks up for you today. So I'm just gonna place this guy down without dropping everything else. <laughs> okay, so now we have our One United. This is amazing because it's a leave-in spray. So a lot of questions are asked to me about, you know, do I need to use a leave-in treatment or a leave-in conditioner, detangler? You know, is my hair, does, do I have to have long hair to be able to use this? And I'm gonna let you know this is also very versatile. So any hair length, because not only is it a leave-in detangler, but it also has a lot of other essential uh, vitamins in it. I want to say vitamins because I'm going to get you to look hair and look at hair in a different way, such as um, you know we use makeup on our face and we have like a certain routine when we put on our makeup. We like to put on just say our sunscreen first with a moisturizer, and then you like to put on your prep, and then you can put on your actual makeup. Okay, so we can, <laughs> I'm getting a question already. So I wanna make sure that if you get questions while this is going on, throw your questions right in the chat box. And if you guys have any questions even about that, you can just like make a comment. But the chat box, just tap on there and then you can go ahead and put the question in there. I'm just letting you know. Okay, so let's get back to One United. So it has so many different benefits in it. So this is what I would like to say as your primer and as your sunscreen in one. If we were gonna be talking about a facial routine, this is a great way to have for your hair routine. So as soon as you get out of the shower, you're gonna spray this in first. Not only is it gonna help you brush through your tangles, but there is a heat protection in here. 
as well as there's a lot of proteins in this. So the proteins really help to strengthen up your hair. So if your hair has been previously color treated or um, has some heat styling damage, this will help to be able to give that softness back to your hair and be able to give essentially those vitamins back in. So we want to make sure that you're always prepping with your One United. This also works on everybody's hair type. So you have naturally curly, you have naturally straight, your hair is short, your hair is long. You can definitely use this because there's every sort of essential tool in here that you can use in your hair. It's also great on kids' hair as well. It really helps to brush through. All right, so I'm going to move on to our Shine Flash. So Shine Flash is kind of what it sounds like. It really is. It's a great spray bottle. You can go spray it right into your hair and it instantly gives you shine. So I'm going to just put that cap back on. <laughs> it instantly gives you shine. So when you finish a hairstyle and you want to be able to add that extra in, you can go ahead and spray that in. What's really important to know is it doesn't weigh down your hair. So don't worry. You don't have to like hopefully just get a quick little mist and like it's not going to do anything cross your fingers don't worry you can spray as much as you want in it will not overdose the amount in your hair so you're safe with that trust me this is tried tested and true this is also a product that is used behind the scenes during fashion week at 10. then we have our redkin iron shape 11. so if you notice these all had different colors on the front of the bottles and this one is red. This is just showing that it's a heat protector. So anything with this red pink label is a heat protector. It does say it on the bottle as well. And for anybody who doesn't want to read that part, there's actually pictures. <laughs> so you're good. You'll know when you see the bottles that this is safe for using blow dry curling iron and a flat iron. And for these ones, what these ones mean is our gold is for hairsprays and anytime you see the green label, that is also for volumizing. So I'm gonna get back into our iron shape. For anybody out there, what does the 11 mean? Anybody, anybody? Now we were talking about the hold factor. So not only in hairsprays does it matter, but it also matters in our heat protectant too. So if you're going to be using this in your hair, just know that you have the hold of 11. It also has the heat protection. So anybody who loves to spray their, or sorry, anybody who loves to um, do a beach wave, curls, flat iron, this is your way to go because it is going to give you a bit of a hold. Now, like I mentioned before, with our Fashion Work 12, the hold is very like, you can run your fingers through, so 11 is even more. So you can definitely run your fingers through it. You don't have to worry about spraying it in, swiping it through with a flat iron, and now your hair is crispy. You're not gonna have that effect at all. But what it is gonna do is help maintain that look for a long time so the longevity is amazing what also is really cool with this formulation from iron shape they've made it so it can refresh your look and why this is like completely mind-blowing is for anyone who's ever tried to flat iron their hair one day the next day you wanted to curl it and it holds nothing well, that is because you've already gone in with a flat iron, so your hair is done. It is not gonna take another shape. You need to almost rewash your hair, blow dry it, and redo it again to get that look from the curling iron. Well, if you use Iron Shape 11, it will help to break that memory and start a new curl. So you're okay, you don't have to rewash your hair, you can use this and it, you're good to go. On top of the fact, you are getting the heat protection and then you're getting that extra hold as well. So these are really, really great products to know. This is also really helpful because if you're thinking even we're getting into holiday season, for anybody who's really tough to buy for, I can guarantee if that special person loves to use any hot tool, and it doesn't even have to be a flat iron or a curling iron, it can be a blow dryer, it can be anything that's out there that's on the market right now. Um, hot Tools has that great blow drying round brush, which is like one of my faves. This is all great to be able to use to be able to hold that style. So this is a great stocking stuff for idea as well. All right, so who is ready for styling? <laughs> I know I am. I want to show these um, hot tools that I have that are displayed at the moment, but I am going to be using them. And I kind of want to just show you them as I use them and go on because I am ready to dive right into looks. Who else is? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to dive into some looks. Now, first model, 
She's quiet and shy. She's a little self-conscious with her three legs, but it's okay. <laughs> You're going to also learn that I like to laugh at my own jokes, so bear with me. <laughs> it's different. I wish I could see all your beautiful faces, but I can't. So you guys got me talking all day. Now, I'm going to start talking about prepping the hair. Prepping the hair is crucial. And why I talk about this is because in when we're creating hair cells, a lot of us will just dive into creating a look and at the end we'll douse it with a ton of hairspray. And after that hairspray, we think our, our look is good to go and then it starts to fall flat. Well, that's not the case. This is why it's so important to prep your hair. It's just like if you're thinking like being a hair engineer right now, it's like making sure the foundation of the house is perfect before we start building. You can't just create or make a brick wall with no concrete in between. It's all about making sure that you have everything in the perfect order with the perfect products. So I first started off with um, shampooing and conditioning with our All Soft. So I know that her moisture balance in her hair is great. It's gonna take a great curl and it's gonna work with me really well. I'm not gonna get frizzies. I'm not gonna be fighting anything like that. Next, I'm going to spray in our One United. Now, if you notice, I'm going and I'm spraying it in her hair as it's dry. This is completely fine. In fact, I like to spray my One United the day after if I want to refresh my blow dry or blow out or curls, um, just to get like a revamp look. When I do spray in One United, what I wanted to let you know, if you're spraying it on dry hair, you want to give it a good mist, but then blow dry it. Don't put a hot tool directly on it, meaning um, a hot tool as a flat iron or a curling iron. It's okay with a blow dryer. So we're going to, first, after we do our One United, or sorry, after we do our All Soft, we're going to go in with our One United, and I'm just going to quickly spray. Now, I'm going to talk to you guys all as hairstylists because I want you to have the same lingo so you know what we're talking about when we give out these great hot tips on uh, chatters on their Instagram accounts. So when I'm talking about hair and I'm looking at the root area, we're going to say this is our base area. This is where the hair is going to be shown in the direction it's going to sit by how the base is moving. So if you wake up in the morning and your hair is sticking straight up, it's not down here from um, how it's sticking straight up. It's sticking straight up because the base is essentially moving that hair to go in a crazy direction. So when we're styling our hair, we want to start with the base first. Next is the mid lengths and that's the center of your hair. Depending the length of your hair is depending on how much of the mid length you have and then your ends are just your ends. So this is really important to know because not only for styling are we looking at the different places to style, which usually means we're gonna style it um, differently in each section of the hair, but it also can mean that you're gonna be using different products in these different areas. So just like I gave that example of when you styled your hair and then you finish off with hairspray, you're essentially only hairspraying in your mid-length, maybe ends, whereas you might wanna have some more hairspray in your root area all depending on what you're trying to achieve. So if I'm going too fast right now, or like I mentioned before, if you have any questions about what I'm saying, make sure to drop it right into uh, the question box and I'd be happy to help you guys out, okay? So right now, I'm going to go in and I'm gonna spray a little bit of the One United from mid-length to end, just for that refresh. And also giving me that heat protection. So that's number one. Number two, I'm gonna get our guts 10. All right. So we're gonna give it a shake. Now, some of you might be wondering why I'm spraying it into dry hair. It is perfectly fine. So when you get out of the shower and you're gonna be styling your hair straight from out of the shower, it is okay to use your guts 10 in your hair when your hair is wet. In fact, that's what it says. So go ahead and do that, but you can do it afterwards if you need to refresh your look the next day. This is all fine. I just wanted you to start thinking a little bit more like a hair engineer in this. That's why it's the master class, right? Our hair engineering hot tip on this is our guts 10 is a hold of, sorry, our guts 10 is a hold of 10. When you spray it in when your hair is wet, the water is gonna dilute that 10. So you're not gonna get a full 
hold of 10, just as a hot tip. So if you're really needing that grip and hold, go ahead and spray it in again on um, your wet hair if you wanted to, or on your dry. If I spray it in on our dry hair right now, I'm gonna get the true hold of 10. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spray it right into her base area. This is going to help with giving me a little bit of lift. Now, if I'm gonna talk about, um, we're gonna get into our first look, but I'm prepping the hair first. But just say her first look was, um, we just wanted to have a volumizing blow dry or a volumizing blowout. I would go ahead and I would put in guts. Now, if we're gonna think like a hair engineer right now, we're gonna think of where we wanna put that volumizing um, guts in. So if your hair, you want it to have more volume in the crown area, you wanna make sure that you are focusing in on that crown area. If you wanted to make sure you had more volume in the root area in the front, cause you wanted to have that lift in your fringe, you're gonna make sure you're putting that guts into the root in the front here. If you want it on the sides, then you do the same. If you wanted it all over the hair, you can also use guts. Like I said, it's great for pliability from mid length to ends, if that's what you wanted to do. But I wanted to let you know that if that's the case, you gotta remember, what is your hair like on the ends? Do you need a little bit more moisture here? Do you need a little less moisture here? If your hair is a little bit drier, then maybe putting guts all the way down the ends isn't the greatest idea. You wanna put something that has a little bit more slip. So in her hair, she is a little dry on the ends. <laughs> so that's why I use the one united on the ends. So I'm working them both together. So you're not going in and just spraying product everywhere. You're actually doing it for a purpose, okay? So now I'm gonna grab my brush here and I'm gonna start her blowout. Now our first look is a holiday wave, a curl holiday wave. It's a, actually more of a glamorous curl. So I'm making sure that I'm keeping that in mind when I start to style her hair. Okay, so I'm just brushing this all through right now. And I'm gonna get our Hot Tools Professional Blow Dryer. And I'm gonna pull the cord to make sure I don't pull everything else down. Cause knowing me, that that's totally what would happen on a live. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna go through and brush this all in. Now, before I turn on the blow dryer, I want to tell you what I'm doing. So just in case you don't hear me over the blow dryer. Now, remember what I said about having your roots as your base. This is the foundation and is gonna hold your hairstyle. This is what I'm concentrating on. I'm gonna go in and give the hair a bit of a wrap dry. And a wrap dry means I'm pushing the hair in the direction that I want it to sit, right from the base. And I'm using a brush, okay? So I know a lot of you probably, when you step out of the shower, you put in your product, you kind of run your fingers through, you brush it, and then you throw in the blow dryer and you're literally just shaking it all around, right? Shaking it all around and then you have this huge lion's mane. And now you're like, okay, where do I go from here? And if you're flat ironing your hair, you're taking really small sections, you're getting right in there, going super slow, and you're doing a lot more work that you don't need to do. And on top of that, you're adding a lot more stress to the hair. I want you to see how I'm doing this so it can help you out with not only shortening your time, but actually giving less stress to the hair. So I'm gonna start by doing a wrap dry. And how you create that is by holding your blow dryer and I'm just going to be brushing the hair in the direction that I want it to sit. So just say I was putting her hair back in a ponytail, my wrap dry would be literally blow drying my hair back in that momentum. Does this make sense? All right. Today, because we're gonna do a glamour curl on her hair, I'm going to blow dry it in the direction that it's going to be sitting. So I'm going to create the part line right here and the hair is going to go over and then that's how I'm going to blow dry it. So I'm just going to put this down for one second. I'm just gonna create that blow or that part line. I'm gonna use a little bit more of Guts 10 to make sure that part line stays nice and clean. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna work it in with my fingers. You can already see the lift it gives, isn't it great? So good. What's really exciting, and I'm gonna like let 
a little bit of the, the looks out of the bag right now, but later on we're gonna show how to do a wet look by using Guts 10, which is amazing because the wet look is super hot right now and it's not going anywhere. All right, so now I have this in the position. I'm going to use my, oops, I'm gonna use my blow dryer and now I'm gonna brush it into sitting the way that I want it to sit. I'm actually gonna start on this side because I want it to sit flatter and in the top here, I wanna have a little bit more of a lift and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you're going to be showing the scalp, you might as well make it nice and clean. You don't want it to be jagged. This is a really glamorous wave and to make sure to like maintain that glamour look. It's all about clean lines. So now I'm going to go right into this area. Now I, if you notice, I was brushing the hair down, doing a slight crisscross motion on this side. That gets the root to sit. Now what happens if we wanted the root to kind of stand up like this? This is where we're changing the direction and we want that root to have lift. Does anybody know what that would entail? How do we get that root to go up like this? And take a slight pause so you can think about it. Well, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to lift it straight off the scalp. And you're gonna see how I'm gonna do this with the brush. But I'm using that and I'm just using a regular brush, it's just a paddle brush. Now, if you wanted to really fine tune those areas to get in really deeply, you notice that I'm using the paddle and this gives me a lot more coverage on the hair, I would use a Denman. And a Denman is a brush that has um, a plastic rounded bottom part with spiked, uh, let me see here, teeth. So I'm gonna actually get my girl Jessica to pull a Denman out and I'm just going to show you. <laughs> there we go. It's not a true live unless things start falling, right? <laughs> All right, so we're just using a Denman here. And a Denman is just like that plastic edge right there. And that way you have a little bit more control because it's a smaller area. So I'm going to show you that. already how much volume I got on her head just by using that Denman and bringing it up. I'm just giving that little bit of a flick and then you're getting that little bit of lift. So for anyone out there that's wanting that really good volume in that fringe area, that's all you're doing. You're giving it a little bit of that lift by flicking it and bringing it up. I'll show you from the front version here just in case if you missed it. So all I'm doing is I'm pinching the hair and I'm bringing it up. I'm pinching the hair and I'm bringing it up with the blow dryer. 
So that way we're not only we're drying the uh, guts 10 that's in there, but because of the volumizing and we're using the blow dryer, it's activating the product to be able to really get that hold and that lift. Okay. So I want to create this glamour wave, but I want to make sure that she's maintaining that level in her fringe area. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn on my curling iron here by our hot tools. I'm going to let that heat up. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and clip that area down. So as I'm styling her hair, I'm not pulling this down. Every curl that I'm doing, I'm making sure I'm doing it with a purpose. And I'm already thinking ahead of what my next look was. If I just curled her hair everywhere, it's not going to have that glamour wave. So I want to have it right here. So I'm going to just pinch that. I'm going to put that clip in. If I like the amount of volume I have in the front, I'll go ahead and start. If I don't and I want more, I'm going to go ahead and just bring that up. Does that make sense? All right. <laughs> so there you go. I have that sprayed in there. Now, I want to see if anybody was listening. Remember I went through those products? I want to use a really good spray that's going to give me a hold of just say 11 <laughs> and also like it helps to protect against heat. Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? Well, if you don't, which I'm sure you guys all do, we are going to use Iron Shape 11. Hot pro tip. So you got to listen to this. I know some of you have done this. When you go ahead to go and curl your hair, you take that little bitty section, you douse it with a ton of product all the way down, and you go ahead and put it on that hot tool, and the first thing it starts doing is like sizzling and popping. And as hairstylists, we're like, don't worry, it's just the product. <laughs> but it's not. It literally is sizzling and popping because we are putting that heat on all that product. Well, what you have to remember is we're just wasting. It's not doing anything to the hair, but we're just wasting the product because it's just getting heating up, it's evaporating. It's not necessary to put it and oversaturate in those areas. Remember, we already prepped her hair with Guts 10, and we also put some One United on here as well, which is helping for the heat protection. So now what I'm gonna do, and also to save time and not overuse the product, I'm just going to spray it through. Is anybody having one of those aha moments where it's like, oh, that makes sense. So now that I've gone through, whoop, excuse me, I'm just going to use my brush, brush it in, making sure to hold that clip in place because I don't want to take that hair out. I want it to maintain that height. All right, now that all of that product is really great and saturated through, this is also the other reason why I like using One United to begin with, and we have our All Soft. If your hair is compromised in the way where it might be super oily here and it might be super dry on the ends, you have to make sure that you're putting the proper products in for those areas because your hair is going to take to heat in different ways and you're going to have a different result. In an area where it's more moisturized, you're going to have like a nice smooth look and in the area where it's dry and you put heat on it, it's going to be frizzy. So you want to make sure that you're going through and you're putting that proper product in that area. That's why I use the iron shape, but that's also why I use the One United in there to make sure that moisture is in there. All right, so now I'm going in. So I'm just taking my curling iron and I'm just going up from above and I'm twisting it towards her face. Now I know a lot of the trends out there have been twisting away, which is still super hot. So keep it up, keep doing that look. It's great for beach waves, but we're doing a glamorous wave. We're making this really retro into old Hollywood style, but with a little bit of our twist on it. So we're gonna bring it in towards the face and if you notice, when I took that section, I'm taking a large vertical section, literally straight from the part, but I'm curling it from just below that, that clip that I put in, okay? And as I put that in, I'm just wrapping all the pieces all the way around the hair, right down to the bottom, making sure that I have complete heat saturation through the hair, okay? Now I'm gonna take the next section, 
and it's almost like an inch wide because we're using a professional hot tool this is where you're going to really notice the difference your hair will heat up all the way through because this is a professional hot tool it's kind of the cheaper brands that you'll find that you won't get as much heat and it won't really saturate or penetrate through the hair uh, mid-length to ends greatly just because it's just the way that it's made. So you want to always go for our professional tools. I know sometimes the question I get about that is because it costs more. What's the difference with that? And that's exactly it. When you're paying a little bit more, it's not only the longevity is going to last you a lot longer, but you're going to get a tool that can work really well. Like professional tools are made for hairstylists to keep on all day using on like 40 heads a day. So this is why you want to be able to invest in something like this. This is a really great investment. Okay, so now I'm going to drop that one down and I'm going to keep going. Now, if you've noticed, as I'm, I'm traveling around her head, I'm still going in and I'm wrapping it towards the front of the head. I'm taking these small sections, just like so. I'm wrapping that around and I'm leaving it on a very low elevation. So I'm talking like a hair engineer right now. The difference between having a low elevation and a high elevation is gonna give you two different styles of curls. So for anybody out there who likes a beach wave, you can do essentially the exact same thing I'm doing right now, but your placement of your curling yarn is going to change. So elevation we know means going up, or if it's elevating, it's going down. So because we're in a low elevation, that means my curling iron is literally pointing down. When I drop this curl out of the curling iron, it's not gonna move, okay? Because it's just sitting in the exact same position that I want it to stay in. So I'm just touching the hair to make sure it's hot. And I'm just gonna drop that out. If I wanted to create a high elevation, or um, if I wanted to create, sorry, more volume like a beach wave, I would bring this curl up and then I'd wrap it around the curling iron in this direction because when I know when I drop that out and that curl breaks up, it's going to layer on top of each other so that curl will break apart. So essentially it looks like we did a whole bunch of different layers of curls individually, but we did it in one shot. So it's kind of cheating. <laughs> These are all the hot pro tips that you can use. So same thing, I'm just taking that section, I'm wrapping it around, still in the same motion and still um, low elevation, all right? Now what's really important to know too is why I'm tapping the hair is to make sure that there is proper amount of heat through the hair. If you've ever noticed when you drop your curl out and it literally bounces off the curling iron and holds nothing, it means the heat hasn't completely saturated through the hair. It hasn't penetrated through the hair. So it needs to be rewrapped and stayed in there a lot longer. All right? That's all that means. So I'm going to leave this and I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to keep traveling around the head. Also, what's really important to know is if your hair does that, like I said, rewrap it because your hair needs heat to be able to maintain um, a, a shape. So if you kind of think hair a lot like, just say, metal. Once you heat up metal, it's going to take any shape or any um, that you pour into. So whatever mold you pour that metal into is gonna take that shape. When you drop that metal shape, out of the mold, if it's still warm, it'll slowly flatten out to wherever it's sitting. Gravity takes hold, right? Hair is a lot of the same way. So if your hair tends to fall flat when you curl it and you drop it out of the curling iron, I want you to see a couple different things. If you drop it out and you run your hands through it while it's still warm or you brush through it while, you're still, while it's still warm, it's gonna flatten out that curl and you're not gonna get that hold anymore. Just say you drop your curl out. Yeah. Just say you drop your curl out, and um, it's like too curly, which we've done before. You know, you're kind of pulling on it. You can pull right from there to drop out that curl even more. It's kind of just knowing the hot tips of what to do with a curling iron and how it affects your hair. So just say I'm going to show like this. I'm going to drop this curling iron out and it was too curly and I didn't want it to be that way, I can literally take that strand, pull it, 
hold it as it's cooling and it'll give it more of a wave instead of a curl. Now I have had a great question that was just asked, keeping that clamp open, absolutely. Sorry guys, I didn't mention that. As I'm going along, I'm creating this, I'm using this curling iron, this one inch curling iron from uh, Hot Tools, just as a wand. I'm actually a big fan of getting curling irons and using them so you can have like different ways of using it. You can just wrap it around the, the actual barrel itself and not use the tong. And it just, you're like, you've just changed your curling iron into essentially a wand. So all I do is just kind of keep that open as I wrap that around. Now in um, other master classes, I've talked about how to create a beach wave. And when you wrap it around, I sometimes leave those ends out. That gives a very casual look. Because we want this to be a lot more of a glamour curl, I'm actually wrapping them completely around the barrel. So then you're gonna get a full curl all the way down, which ends up giving it more of a glamorous look. I'm just holding it here. Now, do you know why we actually keep those ends out when we create a beach wave? Anybody? Well, what we're trying to mimic is more of a natural curl pattern. So by keeping those ends out, you know, some of it is curled a little bit more, some of it's curled a little less, it's giving you more of a natural look. We're creating this style, this Hollywood glam wave, <laughs> it's a little bit more artificial, right? We've created this and it's gonna be noticeably that we created it. Okay, I'm getting to the end here. And I keep moving her around, just making sure she's still in a good shot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this. Now I've chosen to wrap this around, not using the tong, and the tong is this guy right here. I'm just wrapping it around. If you wanted to have a curl that your hair is maybe naturally frizzy, you can go ahead and use the tong. That really helps to kind of press down that hair just to kind of get rid of that frizz. And you can do it in smaller sections. Because I'm speeding up this process, um, I've done the sections a little bit larger and it's wrapping around the barrel itself, which gives me a little bit more movement. You can definitely do this look if your hair is frizzy. You just gotta remember, it's all in the prep, right? So when we first prepped her hair, we were brushing the hair as we were drying it. That will really help to decrease your frizz. Whoops, I'm just gonna drop this down. All right, I got another question here. Do you get a tighter curl, the wand versus a straightener? Awesome, I love that question. Good question, thank you for that. So what you're looking at is when you have a straightener, it's a certain size of plate. Essentially, that is gonna be the size of your curl, just like your curling iron. This is a one inch. So your plate on your um, flat iron is essentially the same. So it's not necessarily that you're going to get a larger or tighter curl. It depends on the size of your plate. The other thing that it depends on is how um, you're gonna be moving that flat iron through the hair. So if your twist is pretty severe as you run that flat iron through your hair, it's gonna be a, a, a stronger coil. If it's a little bit of a looser twist as you wrap it through your hair, you're going to have a, a looser coil. The same goes for a curling iron. So if I was gonna go in, I'll show you on her hair right here. If I was gonna go in, and I wanted to really make this super tight, I can create this really tight together up here. If I didn't want that curl to be super tight, then I can literally just have it loose sitting on the curling iron itself. Does that make sense? All right, I think I got a perfect. All right, so we're just finishing up this last curl. Actually, no, I got one more. I love these questions. Guys, I'm here for you. So at Chatters, we're really strong on making sure that everybody, all our, our clients, everybody out there is educated on the styles that we do. So I'm like sitting in your living room right now. So you make sure you let me know what questions you have and I'd be happy to ask, uh, answer them for you. So same thing, I'm just gonna take this guy and I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and curl it. Do you notice that when I'm wrapping it around, the barrel, I'm still going in the same direction from the beginning to the end. Now, if you notice, I've created this look where it's still, it's curled towards the front of her face on this one side. And as I got to this other side, it's now curling away from her face. Now, what I'm gonna end up doing is brushing this through and just clipping it behind her ear. So it's gonna give a really nice effect. 
Now I know when we normally talk about um, glam waves and back into uh, beauty school, we would do the pin curls, which gives such a great effect. And this one's just a little bit more of a softer look and we've kind of modernized it. So now that I'm letting her hair cool, this side I kind of finished quickly or last, I'm gonna speed up the cooling process by using Fashion Work 12. This really helps to kind of cool down that hair and set it right off the bat. So I'm gonna go ahead, spray that through. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go and grab my finishing brush and why we love a finishing brush, this is such a great tool to have at home. Now some of you might have like five brushes in your drawer but you only use one all the time. It's good to understand the difference between each brush. So we have this finishing brush. It has finer teeth, more of a boar bristle. And what that does is it has a lot more of a controlling effect. So the paddle brushes that have just a larger tooth that's further apart, that's really great for brushing through your hair, um, putting uh, just say product through it, maybe doing your wrap dry, that's a really great brush to be able to use. You, you know, it's gonna help with the airflow going through. Using a finishing brush, this is really gonna help to smooth the hair. So it might be a little more difficult to blow dry the hair with because you're not getting all that air penetrating through the bristles, but those bristles act as so many different fingertips on here to help through the hair. So I'm gonna show you how you can use this to style hair as well. So if you're ever putting your hair up in a ponytail and you're getting all those little bumps, this is great. You wanna use a finishing brush because it'll help smooth those out. I'm just gonna use our shine flash right now to help brush out these curls. And I'm gonna use it, instead of by spraying it in like this, I'm actually gonna spray it into my finishing brush, just like so. Now, I'm gonna use it on the ends. I'm gonna turn her so you can see. How are we doing? Good, perfect. And I'm just going to go ahead and just brush those curls through. And what this is doing is it's encouraging all the curls to sit together to give that really good holiday glam look. Can you see how it's going already? Because we have shine flash in here, it's gonna really help to give us that shine as well. My model loves this look, she told me. <laughs> All right, she's a little quiet now, but you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna brush all this through. If I need a little bit more, and I do of the shine flash on this side, I'm gonna go again, spray that in. Now, can you use the same technique instead of just with shine flash with just a regular hairspray? Absolutely. It's a great way of getting an even distribution of hairspray. So if I was putting her hair up into a ponytail, I could spray hairspray in this, go up in that direction, and I'm getting a better distribution. Instead of trying to put your hair into a ponytail and you spray it and you get one saturation spot. This is a great way of doing that. Now I'm gonna go and I'm just going to stick in just a, two little bobby pins just so you can see how it'll look just behind her ear, just like so. Excellent, so I'm gonna put this in here. I'm getting another question. So, what are the, some of the brushes that everyone should have? That's such a great question. And it's going to go on um, basically what kind of hair type you have. Everybody's hair type is a little different. So if you have naturally curly hair and you want to be able to smooth it, you wanna go with more of a natural bristle. If your hair is um, to stay on the straighter side or you just would like to style it and get a lot of moisture out, you wanted to go with a bristle that has a lot more uh, airflow through so the teeth are in between. What I should do is do a masterclass of all the different brushes so you have an idea of which ones work best on you. But as we're going along, I'll definitely be telling you about the brushes and which ones would be great for different hair types. All the ones that I've just used right now are great for everybody. So the Denman is great for volume. The finishing brush is great for finishing off a look and brushing through the hair. All right. And there we go. I'm gonna finish off with a little bit of hairspray. And I'm going to use, because I wanna have as much hold on top here, and just to help with any of the little flyaways, I'm gonna use uh, Force Wool 23 just to finish it off. 
All right. How does this look, guys? I'm just going to put it in the front here. Excellent. I'm just going to hold that down. I like to hold that down until it just cools or dries, just like so. What do you think? Awesome, pretty easy, right? That was only a few sections as I'm going around to create this look in her hair, and it's really easy for you to do. Make sure when you try this one, though, take a picture and tag us. We would love to see what you created with your hot tools, with Redkin, and with chatters from watching this masterclass, all right? So now I'm gonna go to the next look. So I'm just gonna ask my model to go away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or it's like stuck, there we go, perfect. Now I'm gonna get the next one, thank you. All right, we're getting right into natural texture. I love natural texture because it's time to embrace it, ladies. We have so much natural texture right there that we tend to not play with. We always want to change it up. So let's work with this. This look is great for all. So, I mean, you can still do this in your hair if you have super straight hair, but this is really great for naturally curly. And we're going all large ends of the spectrum with natural curls. We know your hair can be like super, super tight curls or it can be a looser curl. This look is amazing. This one is really great because not only does it look great in real life, but it also looks great on a, you know, a quick Zoom call, maybe a holiday party that you're having virtually. This is the way to go. And I want to show you how you can create this. So just say you're at home and someone calls you and they're like, we're jumping on a Zoom, let's do, like grab a glass of wine and let's chat. I want to show you how you can quickly do this look. Super easy breezy. Not to mention, it is such a classic. So we're getting into ponytails. Um, we all love ponytails, right? They've been around forever. They're not going anywhere. But what's really neat about ponytails, it all depends on the different places that you place it on the head is going to give you a different look or a different vibe. Such as if you want it to be uh, super fun and playful, maybe you're going to put your ponytail up high. If you want to be, um, you know, a little bit more sporty, athletic, maybe just business, you're going to put it more towards just the back, right above your occipital bone. And if you're looking for a clean, classic look, something very um, timeless, let's go for a low ponytail. And that's what we're doing right now. But I want to show you how we can quickly give this look a completely different vibe than just doing a low ponytail. We've all seen it, we've all done it, but I want to start talking trends, all right? Our holiday is all about trends. And one of the biggest things that we can do when we're changing up a regular look is by changing up the different textures. So just like fashion, you're gonna see different play on fabrics. You know, maybe a sweater and you're using like a leather pair of pants with that. Those two clashes of the different fabrics and texture is gonna give you a trendy look. So we're gonna do the exact same idea when creating this low ponytail. So I'm gonna give her more of that leather look we're gonna give her that super sleek back ponytail into a very textured end and the end is gonna be what is gonna give it a lot of fun and liveliness this is where it gets really fun that you can play with textures okay so if your hair was naturally super curly you might not be able to get your brush through all the way and that is fine because what I want to do is just really um, look at the base which is the root area to mid lengths. The ends, I don't want to touch. I don't want to put any product in. Now remember we talked about guts and how it can be used for volumizing roots. Well, now I'm going to use it for something completely different. I'm actually going to use it to get control. So it's not necessarily volume. We're actually getting control in our hair. So a lot of times when I talk about this look to people, they are scared to add product. But I'm telling you, this is not one of those do's. <laughs> You want to get right in there. So I'm just spraying from the front of the head. Here, I'm going to show you here. Just want to make sure you guys can see this okay. Perfect. So I'm just spraying without spraying it all over myself <laughs> from the front of the head. And we're bringing her back. Now, I know some of you might be like, holy moly, that's a lot of product, but this is what we want. This is what's gonna give us that grip and that texture. So I'm just gonna smooth it a little bit with my fingers. Notice, like I said, I'm not touching the ends. I don't wanna to touch the ends at all. So I got that product in. Don't worry if you have a natural curl. So 
a lot of times anybody with naturally curly hair, when we see putting on something that's wet, we're already like, oh, it's gonna like bring in our curl. It's okay, because we're gonna pull it with the nice finishing brush. Now, before I do that, I'm actually going to get an elastic ready. So I wanna show you guys, we're gonna do a little trick with this elastic. So I'm gonna get one elastic, just like the ones that you normally get right here. And I'm gonna put just one bobby pin on it. So I have this prepped and ready to go, all right? So I'm just gonna put this off to the side, just like so. Now, I'm grabbing my finishing brush. Same thing, I'm just gonna bring her back. Now, this is gonna look a little aggressive, so anybody, look away. I just gotta really get her head on there. It's a little loose. <laughs> Don't do that to anybody. <laughs> Not strongly suggested. All right, so. We're going to bring back, <laughs> we're gonna bring back this ponytail and I'm just using that finishing brush. See how smooth and like how much that grabs. If I used a brush that had just a few teeth in there, you're, I'm gonna get ripples and bumps. And if that's not what I'm trying to go for, this is when you need to make sure that you have a finishing brush. This is why I kind of mentioned, you can really change up your, your brushes in according to what kind of hair you have or what kind of look you're trying to do. If your hair is really thick and you'd have a hard time brushing through it all with a finishing brush like this, then that's when you wanna use a paddle brush that has the larger teeth in between. And you can gather it all back in a ponytail and then you can finish it by using that finishing brush and smoothing down that area. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how you can do that. I'm just gonna do this once again. I'm spraying this all down. And I'm gonna switch her around just like so. And you can see that I have it all sprayed in here. I'm just gonna bring it around. I'm just gonna work my hands in like this so, just smoothing that out. I don't wanna get that in the ends. I want the ends to stay dry. All right. So now I'm just gonna quickly brush this down. All right. I got that into a good position, I'm holding it. Now remember that elastic that I had ready to go? This is why I have it ready because you can see, I don't wanna take both my hands off to grab and do this little technique here. So I'm just grabbing this with my hand so I can switch. So, have you ever had that situation where you have that one elastic and you try to wrap your hair around it and it's not snug enough? So you go and you try to wrap it again and it breaks? Or you can't get it around and it's too loose? Well, this is really gonna help to eliminate that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to wrap this elastic around the ponytail and I'm going to put this bobby pin through. And I'm gonna show you, it's a little bit tough at the moment to see, but I'm gonna show you right after. So I'm holding that elastic with my finger right here, just like so. Now I'm gonna grab that bobby pin and I'm gonna slide that through. Do you see how I slid that through? You can see that loop. So now I can have a really customized way of being able to tighten that elastic without it breaking. So I've pulled it and now I'm gonna go the opposite direction to how I wrap that in. And as soon as I can't do, go anymore, I'm gonna slide that bobby pin in. Just against the head, just like so. Perfect. What do you guys think? Is this something you could totally use at home? Yeah, it's just a customized way of being able to set that elastic in. All right, now, elastics aren't really cute, so I do wanna cover that. And I'm gonna cover this with like a really hot tip that we do during fashion week. Are you guys ready for it? Cause this is really good. So before I do that, I'm just gonna fluff up her hair. Now I'm gonna steal a little piece of hair underneath her ponytail. And I'm gonna do like, you know, about a baby pinky finger width. You don't wanna go super thick, otherwise you'll be wrapping and your hair tie will get covered by your own hair and it's gonna end up being super big and it'll look like you have a bun there. It's not the idea. You wanna have a little ponytail, right? So you wanna, have a, you wanna have a full ponytail, not a little one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this around. Now I know a lot of you have seen the trick where you wrap it and then you put the bobby pin through, which is great. But because I used a bobby pin for that elastic already, I don't wanna have a collision of bobby pins in there because it'll get kind of annoying as the day goes on if you have too many bobby pins or you might get a ripple effect. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use Forceful 23. And this is what we also do during Fashion Week backstage just to cover that elastic. So I'm going super close, okay? So don't get worried about the amount of product you use. I'm gonna bring that nozzle right to the ponytail itself and I'm saturating it. Do you see that saturation there? I'm going really close. If I go far and I saturate like this, everything gets it. But I'm being detailed right now. I'm going right on the elastic, covering it around with that hair piece. Do you guys see what I'm doing here? and I'm wrapping it right around. Now this is soaked, and I'm sure I could hold it there for a while until it dries, but ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so we wanna just like smooth it out with our fingers, going in the same motion, so it's nice and smooth, but it's really wet. So now I'm gonna grab my blow dryer, and I'm going to just go along just that area and dry it with a blow dryer just to completely dry the hairspray and the heat will actually like activate the product to work and be super strong. So now I wrap that, now it's super strong against the elastic. Guys, I'm all about being real and I'm gonna point out some of the imperfections that I created here. When I put, and I wrap that elastic around, I got some hair that are sticking straight out. I'm gonna walk away to see if you can see that better because of my dress is black. But sometimes you get these little like fluff, fluffies or just say you get your perfect ponytail in the position and you're losing a piece. This is where you can go in and just like really fine tune that detail. So I'm just gonna use my hairspray. I'm gonna use the strong holding hairspray. I'm gonna miss that area. And now I'm gonna use the blow dryer just to help to lock that down. Just like so. I'm gonna put it on a low blow, not super high, cause I wanna have more control. Just like this. Perfect. And now I have that more detailed. Now, to make this even more of a stronger definition between both textures, I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna finish off with a little bit of Shine Flash. We're coming up to almost finishing our time, so I'm just letting you know we have one minute left. I'm finishing off this look, then you guys will go for lunch. I'm using Shine Flash just on the top here, just to give it a little bit more of that like slick shine definition. I'm going to use my brush, just to brush out these ends. Feel free to really rouge this up. I mean, it's all about playing with texture. There we go. And just having both textures is fantastic. So I'm gonna spray this with our Fashion Work 12. And there you have it, a slick back look with a really volumized ponytail. Don't be afraid to brush out those curls. Make it big and make it gorgeous. Like it really looks amazing. Now when you're on a Zoom call, seeing anybody from the front, you have that frothy texture behind you. So it's a great way of playing on both. You got super sleek and then you got super soft. It is fantastic. All right, so <laughs> this now brings us to the point where we are going on break. I know some of you have a little bit of an Uber Eats uh, combination there that you can call in. Make sure to order your food and use that code that was provided to get a great lunch. And that was in the press pack that was sent out. For everybody else, this is a great time to go and grab a quick snack. We are coming back at 1.15. We have 10 minutes, all right? So I'm gonna get the rest of my models ready for you and we're diving into two looks. We're gonna dive right in. So I'm gonna need you ready and ready to go. Now that we have this pause, if you think of any questions, feel free to put it right into that question area. And when I come back, I will be happy to answer them for you, okay? All right, guys, we'll see you in 10 minutes.
All right, welcome back. That was really fast. So I hope you were able to grab a drink or a cocktail. <laughs> hey, it's noon, right? <laughs> and uh, come and join us because now it's time to get right into some really amazing looks. So I wanted to step up our holiday hair game by, you know, sparkles. Like, come on now, who doesn't like having sparkles? And I want to show you how you can create this look at home. So I used our let me see here. Our Grip Tight Redken uh, Barber for Bruise here. And all it is is their strong holding gel. I've squirted it right into the actual bowl itself. I'm gonna attempt to do this without spilling it on myself. <laughs> and then you just go ahead with sparkles. Now, this is just a little vial that I'm showing you just for um, camera purposes, but when I did this, I had a large amount of sparkles. I literally just kept dumping it in until you had a really good saturation. So now I'm gonna show you. I'm just like spinning this around and it is amazing, guys. Like this makes just even such a cool visual and it really spices up any look. So I'm gonna be showing you how you can actually use this after as well. It's a really hot look. I actually uh, started doing this a couple of years ago and now it just keeps changing and it keeps coming back and it's a really great way of vamping up your holiday look. And you can use really any color. And who doesn't love sparkles? Oh, and I wanted to tell you, I've done this on myself as well. I have had this question asked so many times, like how hard is that to get out of your hair after you use it? Super easy, I'm letting you know. Because you use gel, when I jumped into the shower, it literally just kind of came off in pieces. So don't worry, it's not gonna be in your hair for eternity. Because <laughs> once you get sparkles in there, it's almost impossible getting them out afterwards. All right, so we're gonna go into our look number three, and that is our wet look. This is such a hot look. It started a little while ago, and now it's really taking shape. And this is a great time to try something new. Maybe something that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. You can play around with all these looks. My hot tip for you when you're creating a new style, I'm gonna suggest for you to try it at home before doing you know, a major event. 
So why I'm, I'm saying that is usually when we're getting ready for a big event, we tend to like have, you know, our energy is high. We're trying to do our makeup, getting the great clothes. It's not a great time to be able to try a new look for the first time. You want to just try to encounter or get all those bumps and kinks out of the scenario first. So just say you're hanging out at home and you want to try something new. This is the perfect time to do it. Okay. Give it a go. And then you know that you can go to this look after in any situation for a major event. How does that sound? Okay. So I'm going to start with this. We are going to grab our first model. And what's a little bit creepy about this model is she kind of looks like me. <laughs> I, I didn't create my own mannequin head, but that is such a cool idea. I think I might. <laughs> so this is the Cindy. <laughs> Cindy with three legs. <laughs> Anyways, clearly I find my own jokes really funny. I hope you're laughing at home. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to create into this wet look and we're going to create going back super sleek. So what's funny about the wet look, not a lot of people realize, is your hair is actually not wet. It just has the illusion of having that wet texture. And there's two kind of wet textures. You can have where it's super slick, slick back wet, or you can have where you have a little bit of that finger texture in there. This one, we're gonna do a little both. We'll have a little fun, and then you can kind of figure out which one you wanna try, and you can try it out at home. So what is really important when we're starting off a look for everybody who is on First thing is we're looking at the root area, right? It's all about what is in your base. So we want to make sure those hair strands and that root is going in the right area. So what area would that be? What direction are we going in? We're going back, aren't we? Perfect. So we want to go ahead and we're going to make sure that we're doing a directional blow dry going back. So. If her hair was wet straight into the shower, this is what I would be doing. I'd be going back into the position that I want to go in using our one United to start off with just so I have that heat protection. And then also I can spray in a little bit of iron shape as well. If I want to have extra heat protection, if you're somebody who needs to be able to smooth out your ends afterwards, I'm going to talk about that after I finish doing this look and I'll show you how you can do that as well. But the whole idea is to make sure that we're doing this quick and efficient because, you know, we don't want to go back and go back onto extra steps. And why I'm saying that is this. If you've already previously, just say you wanted to have the wet look and you want your hair to be super straight. I'm not going to first flat iron her hair because what we're doing is we're changing the direction of the hair to go back. If I flat ironed her hair going downwards, I'm going to be fighting a lot of pieces to try to get that hair to go back in product. All right. So what we want to do is we want to go with the root direction first and afterwards is when I'll flat iron those ends. You kind of see how I'm thinking right now. All right. So I'm going to do the, the directional blow dry and I'm just going to mock it for one quick second so you can see the direction that I'm going in. All right, right before I would jump any further because I'm using this blow dryer, I just needed to talk a little bit of maintenance about our blow dryers. This is so important because I get this question a lot behind the chair as a stylist. A lot of times I have guests coming in complaining about breakage along their hairline. They do use hot tools. They don't necessarily use a lot of curling irons or flat irons, but they use their blow dryer and they don't know why they're getting breakage. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, this is really important to know. This little nozzle here isn't what a lot of times what happens is when we open our box with our new blow dryer, we see these nozzles, throw them away. Do not do that. They're there for a purpose. They're there to give direction to the hair and also to help to prevent any heat going directly on the hair. So if you notice in the front of the blow dryer, you have these metal grids. When you take that off and now I'm blow drying her hair like this, those metal grids can actually touch the hair because they do get really hot they can sear it and break it. All right. So that's why it's really important to have this nozzle. Also, it's really important to have this nozzle on there because this is giving me full control of the blow dryer. If I try to do a directional blow dry without a nozzle on here, the airflow is just kind of blasting out. So I'm essentially doing this to her hair, shaking it up and blowing it all around. 
I don't have control of the hair whatsoever. So that even is when you're like blow drying your hair using a round brush or anything, you don't have control if you don't have that nozzle. I'm getting complete control because I'm directing the blow, the air flow to go in the direction that I want it to. So I'm putting this back on there and I'm using my brush. All right. Now that I have the direction going in the correct way, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring out our product of choice, Guts 10. Okay, so Guts 10 clearly is our savior today. You guys are seeing how I used it to bring the hair back slicked into a ponytail. We used it to give volume into the root and now we're going to use it again to create a wet look. And this is why I wanted to demo this because anytime I talk about this look and I say the steps on how to do it, I don't think anybody really realized how much product you have to use in this time. All right, so what we're going to do is we're spraying Guts 10 into the hair. Now when I say we're spraying it into the hair, we're gonna be an air uh, a hair engineer right now. And I want you to see where our wet look is gonna to go to. So today I'm not gonna bring it all the way down to the ends, I'm just gonna bring the wet look just to about the crown area and it's gonna stop there. Same with the sides, I'm gonna bring the wet look just to behind the ears and it's gonna stop there and then she'll have her hair flow. And with that, this is where we're going to start off by spraying our product. So you're gonna take your product and just at that starting line of where that product is gonna stop, I'm gonna start right there and I'm gonna spray guts 10 into that area all right and now i'm just going to smooth that down now i'm going to take my next slice and i'm going to do the exact same thing i'm going to spray guts 10 into that area and i'm going to smooth that down so i'm going to mimic it on the other side i'm just not turning the stand but just so you know that's what i'm doing now you can see that Guts 10 has, um, uh, there is water in it, so that's why it's damp. So I am gonna have to use the blow dryer, and I'm gonna use the blow dryer to put it in the direction that I want it to go. And not only that, I'm using it just to dry that product, all right? So you can see I've put it into this area. It's really saturated. I'll clip this away so you can see. There we go. And I'm gonna use the blow dryer. Now, can you use a brush during this time? Absolutely. I'm just using my fingertips because I'm gonna have more of a, a finger raked texture. So I'm going in using my fingertips. So that is done. Now I'm gonna go for my next layer of Guts 10. So I'm just taking another section. If you notice, it's a, like almost one inch, all depending on how thick your hair is, you'll know with how much you'll need to separate or divide that section up. If I go ahead and spray that in, and uh, it's really not penetrating all the way through, like you notice there's dry hairs underneath, you know you need to make those sections thinner. So I'm going in and spraying it in the root. Now, I'm spraying it in the root, but because our previous section, Guts 10 ended here, remember, I have to travel down the hair to that area, all right? So I'm going like this, and I'm traveling down to that area. I'm bringing it all the way back, just like so. I'm doing the same on the other side. Now, I've created this look a couple times. I've done this on myself too. It's a great way of when you have, you know, you've been working all day and you have to do something quickly afterwards. You have an event to go to. You have like a quick meeting that you have to be, um, like you wanna vamp up your look. I'm telling you, this is such a great look and it happens to do, it's really easy to create super fast. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm spraying right here to just about the last spot that we started off with. All right, I'm going in. Now, if I want to be really precise, and if your hair is super thick, 
You might want to stop in between. I keep doing um, a few sections, layering the guts 10 through it. If you need to, you can go ahead with a blow dryer and dry each section. I'm just kind of doing this for time wise. And it's also going through her hair really well. So I'm going to take the blow dryer again. I'm going to clip away these hairs so you can see. It's all about keeping those sections neat. It keeps it really easy. how much pliability it's giving and it's giving a hold as well. If you find around your ears it's still falling or you don't have that, go ahead and re-add. It's okay. Guts 10 is really a great product. You're not going to overdo it. It's not like all of a sudden you're going to reach the point where you're like, oh no, I can't do anything else in my hair and I have to start all over. It's okay. In fact, I'll show you how I'm going to spray in a little bit more around her ear just so it sits better. Now remember I was talking earlier about using a finishing brush or just a paddle brush with the wider bristles. I want to show you this. I, this is actually one of the wet brushes and it's showing you how the bristles are a little wider so you can get through. It's not going to give you necessarily a super smooth look, but it's going to have better airflow so you can dry your hair a lot better. We're coming to our last spots. Now see this piece is from, it still is shooting forward. That would be all taken care of when you do your uh, paddle brush, your wrap dry. Remember, we wanna make sure our hair is going in the right direction. This is exactly the reason why, so you're not fighting it so much. All right, so now I need an extra arm. <laughs> go, go gadget. I think I just aged myself with that one. Okay, so now I'm gonna take away my next section. And I'm just gonna take a small one. And remember, whoops, I'm going upside down, so I have to go this way. You wanna go back and travel all the way to where you first started and having your guts 10. So we're bringing it all the way back, just like so. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and just rock this all back her hair can handle it. Like I said, if your hair is fighting it, then you have to make your sections a little bit smaller and make sure that you're getting full saturation of product. Don't be scared. This is another reason why I love using salon professional products because you'll find a little bit goes a long way and there's also so much that's in the can itself. So we gotta make sure that we're doing not only our prep properly, but our products are proper. If I went and tried to create this look and just dried it and then just hairsprayed it back, you can see how that, that's not gonna last the longevity because that front top layer will end up breaking apart and everything else underneath is gonna constantly keep shifting because there's no hairspray in there. You wanna make sure that you saturate and you go through each section. All right. So I'm just going to work that in. All 
This is definitely one of those looks we did a lot during Fashion Week as well. And it's one of the ones that I get requested a lot from different celebrities too. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish it off by using the blow dryer, using my fingertips and using the brush as well. have it on um, the strongest level of uh, airflow, so it's on the highest. Also, the heat is also on high. Now what you're gonna notice is, now she's not completely dry and it's okay because I'm gonna just move forward, but what you're gonna notice is you're still gonna have movement in the hair and this is what we want. Gus 10 isn't making it hard and not making it like sculpted. It's giving it a tacky pliability so when I run my fingers through it, I can kind of mold it into any shape that I want. Because it's all in the hairs itself, as you move, they're gonna take a shape, but then what we're gonna use is we're gonna put it on our hair engineering caps and we're gonna think of what would be the next step to completely make this look strong and hold, all right? As I finish drying this, just two more seconds because I just want it to be completely locked and then we're gonna go and we're gonna finish it off. So let think about that for one, one second. Let me know what you think that next look is going to be or that next product to make sure this is locked and held. that product our product actually would be our forceful 23 that is our hairspray right that is our strongest hairspray that I'm using today that we sent to you guys now red can actually goes up to 32 so you're getting really strong so if you wanted to lock down a look this is exactly the route that you want to go to and I'm gonna do it in a second but I wanted to show you the quick pliability of how guts works so if I wanted to create this look and have it super sleek I'm going to need Jessica, who's behind the scenes, to hand me my comb. You're going to use something that's going to give you the most control. And we're talking about brushes and tools here. And one of the things that's going to give you the most control is just a comb. All right? So it's, you're not going to get like um, a ton of area that you're going to be working. You're going to only work in one area, but it will give you the most control because look at how finely placed those teeth are. Now, I'm not going to use the ends. I'm just going to use this. If I wanted it to be a sleek look, then I would go ahead and just slick that down with the comb and then I would spray it down and lock it in with Forceful 23. All right? You can see how quickly it sleeks. Now this is even still wet. When this dries, you still have that pliability. But for me, when I do this look in, in my hair, I like to have a little bit of lift. So when I do that little lift, I actually create that by creating those finger ridges. So I'm just gonna break that for one second and I'm just gonna go in with my fingertips and I'm just going to give that look of having a little bit more like I just got out of the pool and I raked my hair back. See how it's giving you that more of that texture. How does that look, Mike? Can you see that texture on screen? 
Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to use our, not our Fashion Work 12. I mean, you could, but it's not going to give you a ton of hold. We're going to use our Forceful 23, and I'm going to spray that down. And if I have any areas that need extra, and it so happens to be just behind the ears, tends to need a little bit more, you can go ahead and spray that. Now, if we're thinking like a hair engineer and all our great tools that we work with, you can definitely use something to help lock this down. Remember how we covered that elastic and we used the blow dryer? Well, it's coming back. <laughs> and I'm just gonna dry this down. Okay, so remember how the first look we did, we did the glam waves and we pinned those, that, the bang down, the, um, the volume in the fringe, we pinned that down so the volume didn't drop. Well, we're gonna do the same idea with her hair because now we got the front going. I'm obsessed, I absolutely love how this looks, but just say you wanted the back to have a wave or you wanted the back to have um, just a straight look. This is when you can go in and do it. There's no point of doing everything first and then going ahead and adding that product. You're adding more work for yourself. So all that work that you did trying to blow dry this or curl it or flat iron it, you're taking it away anyways by locking it down with the Guts 10. This is when you would go in and you would just secure this down with clips just so it doesn't move out of place. And then you can tap that with just using your curling iron or your, your flat iron just to create that extra wave, all right? Now, if your hair is already done from the day before and you did this look, perfect. You don't even have to do anything back there. You can just finish it off with a little bit of, let's say, let's do Fashion Work 12, just so it doesn't get frizzy, helps with the humidity protection, and a little shine flash. Now, you wanna have another little hot pro tip I'm gonna tell you right now. Shine flash is like an eraser for hair, all right? So have you ever ha had those moments where you've sprayed a lot of product in? So, such as when I wrapped um, my other model's hair with the hair um, just around the elastic and I got really close with the hairspray. When you put in a lot of hairspray, there's you know the chance when you dry it, you're gonna get a little bit of that residue afterwards. It almost gets white and webby. I thought I saw maybe some over here, so I wanted to show you that example. Sometimes where your blow dryer touches where you have a product, you can get like a residue line or a white line. Our Shine Flash, Ele or Shine Flash 11, ooh, that doesn't exist. <laughs> Our Shine Flash will actually help to get rid of it. So if you have an area that has that little bit of residue, you go ahead and spray that in there and it'll help take that out and you won't see it at all. Little hot tip. Okay, this is where we get to have fun. Not only was this super easy to like create, guys, I just did this for you on like camera right now. You saw how fast this works. This is something really easy to transition from a daytime look instantly into an evening. This looks super hot, but let's step it up and like amplify it into a holiday glam look. Oh yes, gel sparkles. <laughs> She gets the sparkles. Now, how cool is this? I just want you guys to be really creative about it. Just think about different ways that you can use the sparkles. I want to put this in here because I just think that this is so fun and like, why not have fun with it? I'm gonna go ahead and just like slick that back. I'm gonna make it more of like an ombre style where it's gonna be a little bit more saturated around the, head, the face, the hairline there. And then it's just gonna slowly even out to the back. This looks so great, especially during um, New Year's. You're not sure what to do with your hair? Why not do this? It's so fun. There we go. But you don't always have to do a slick back look. I'm gonna show you with the next look something else that you can do with the sparkles if you want to amp it up just for the holidays. Like how hot does this look? I want this in my hair immediately. Maybe after I'll put it in. <laughs> Like, look how cool that is. Just that fun kind of ombre 
sparkle. Now, as this goes and you want to keep applying, feel free. And because it's embedded into the grip tight gel, you're not going to go through a night and it's like falling everywhere in the house. So don't worry, you're good. It's like rock solid in there. Mike's showing this. I just want to show. Here we go. All right. See how that is? Just want to make sure that sees good there. It looks amazing. I love it. This is just such a hot look. All right, what do you guys think of this look? Is this a thumbs up? Is this something you could do? I love hearing feedback, all right? Now I'm gonna move on to our next look. Now please, if you have any questions, by all means. All right, everything that I'm using right now is kid safe, all right? So sparkles, sparkles I just got from a regular craft store, so you can definitely get that from anywhere. Clearly I can't really speak on behalf of sparkles because. We don't make those, <laughs> but I can definitely speak on the gel. It is completely kids safe. This is all salon professional grade. So everything is completely safe. Sparkles, like I said, you don't want your kids eating it, but it's just to put into the hair itself. All right, now we're gonna move in to our next look, which is a low uh, tied ponytail. So I'm gonna get, just kind of pass me my next model. <laughs> I think she's mesmerized by the sparkles. She's getting sparkles later too. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pass you back my girl. Thank you, lovely. It's like the mystery arm that gets reached in virtually. <laughs> it's good. All right, so we got our next model and we're going to be showing a really fun and easy, just same idea, our low ponytail, but we're gonna go in a different direction. So we showed you super sleek, pulled back low pony well this one is look number two it's a knotted ponytail with a soft romantic texture this is a great one because the soft romantic texture is somewhat something that you can everybody can use if your hair is straight if your hair is naturally curly it's really not uh super soft and flowy and it tends to be a little easier to wear and you know what it's kind of like easy for mistakes it hides mistakes now a question that i just had about the sparkles from our redkin brews it's called grip tight holding gel it's like their strongest holding gel basically it's really good and because it's a professional gel, it's going to last. And like I said, it's not going to break apart and you're not going to have sparkles falling everywhere. This is a really good one to do. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to jump into this natural, very um, easy look. And I, this is also another really quick and easy look that you can do. Sorry, I'm just going to tighten up my mannequin head. She's getting a little loose. There we go. And I'm going to just turn her around. Now she has cute bangs, so you can definitely use this if you have a fringe as well. But what I'm going to do is quickly run through her hair just to give it movement. So if you've ever heard the term day two, you know, day two hair, day three hair, what that means is we want to work with what you already have. So these are great looks that you can do the day after a freshly washed hairstyle. So her hair looks like she already had a style done in it, which is great. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh it up. So I'm going to spray our Iron Shape 11. Now just say the day before we already previously prepped her hair and she had a nice blow it. So I'm going to work with what she's got. So I just kind of sprayed all over Iron Shape 11. Just shake it up. This is a look if you wanted to have volume in it, you definitely can. She's not going to, it's not a big deal, but I'm just going to quickly brush through that Iron Shape 11 so I have a really nice distribution. Now I just turned on my one inch curling iron and I'm going to go in ahead and do almost the same technique that we did last time, but this time I'm going to use the tongue. So before you saw when I used it, I just went ahead and I wrapped it around like so. Well, this time I'm going to go through and I'm just going to use the tongue. So I'm going to actually use the curling iron in an upward motion and wrapping it around this way. Can you do it like this? Absolutely. This is just easier for my arm on this direction. So, all I'm looking at is her hairstyle is going in a low ponytail. So really the only hair you're going to see, if we're going to think like an engineer here and we want to make sure that we're not doing too much work or more work than we need to, is really the top layer. That just veils over the look itself. So that's all I'm going to look at when I'm styling. That's the only hair that I'm going to pick up here. I'm just going to wrap a little bit away from the face. 
and I just inserted the curling iron. Now, if we were talking like those hair terms that I was saying to you before, remember, what area would this be? If this is our base, this would be our mid lengths. So I've actually inserted the curling iron into the mid length and I'm wrapping it around the barrel, making sure the ends are staying downwards. Just tapping it down and wrapping it around. Tap, tap, tap. Wrap, wrap, wrap. <laughs> I think I'm just so hilarious. <laughs> All right, next section. Same thing, super easy. Now this time I'm gonna shake it up. I'm gonna bring up the elevation. I brought up the elevation. I'm wrapping it around the barrel in the center. When I feel like it's warm enough, I'm tapping it down. Now, does anybody know the reason why I actually insert the curling iron into the mid lengths instead of starting at the ends and wrapping it all the way up? Well, I'm gonna answer that for you. The reason is I wanna have an even distribution of heat throughout the curl. So if I start from the ends and I wrap all the way up like this, the ends are gonna be so much more curlier than the actual mid length and then right to the base. So you're gonna have kind of that retro looking curl style, which is fine if that's the look that you wanna go for, but I wanna have a little bit more of a disheveled day two feel. So I'm gonna insert the curl and the curling iron in the mid length and just kind of tap it down. And if I don't really fully curl the ends, I'm fine with that. I just wanna make sure they're smooth. So that's why I just kind of run it through the curling iron itself. Okay, so I'm going on this side as well. Same thing. Now, if you notice on that side, I curled away from the face, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And the reason why I'm doing that is this is just the look that I wanna have in, the, in this style. It's really nice to have that soft and kind of blowing away from the face, as well as it's the, kind of the motion that the hair direction is gonna go in. And you'll see in one quick second. So I'm just wrapping that away. Tap, 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 wrap, wrap, wrap. I feel like we should make that as a song. <laughs> I need a beat, just kidding. I really wish I had a DJ. That would be really awesome, right? DJ and like hair mixes. <laughs> All right, there we go. I'm slowly moving around the head. Now, so far I've done, let's see, I'm on my, I think sixth section of hair and I'm almost done guys, this is so easy. I'm all about creating styles that are really fast and really easy for you to do and using what you already have, your natural texture. If your hair was naturally curly and you wanted to create this look, what I suggest for you is either if your curls work, you can skip this step altogether and go right into the style itself or if you have a couple curls that are fuzzy or like you've slept on them and they're not working out for you, you can go in with a curling iron that is more of your curl size. So if you have a tighter curl, you probably need anywhere between like a three quarter inch curling iron, or maybe even we call it a pencil iron. It's really tiny. And you can use that over the frizzier areas just to help like soften them out. So it looks like it's a refreshed curl again. If your hair is straight and you want to keep it in this straight, oops, got to find a spot and you wanna keep it in that straight zone, by all means do it. What I suggest if your hair is straight so it doesn't slip out of this style is to go ahead and add the guts 10 into it. Blow dry it through just doing a wrap dry, blah, 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 blah. blow dry it through doing a wrap dry just so it gets that texture so when you go and try to manipulate the hair itself, it's not just sliding out, okay? So now I'm just gonna run my fingers through. Because I did already previously prep her hair with Guts 10, it's great because I do have that pliability. So if you had a fringe, a curtain bang or anything, this is the time when you would take out that curtain bang. And I'm gonna show you something really cool. This is a hot tip. I'm gonna get Jessica, my behind the scenes girl, to pass me that green sponge there. I know this seems like something that you would have just like, you know, in the kitchen, and it essentially is, but this is all part of my um, editorial kit that I have in my bag when I do hairstyles. Because we always see the girls that have all those like soft little flyaways, those little fluffies. I'll take one of these grippy kind of um, sponges that are clean, that I've never used on my dishes, and I go ahead and just brush that out. And that will help to give that softness. So on a mannequin head, her hair is all one length. It's a little bit hard to show, but on a real person's head like myself, 
you can just <laughs> like you didn't know that um, you can just go ahead and use that sponge and it really helps to get all those fly away so this really helps if you wanted to have that soft flowy look just grab yourself a sponge and plus you look like a rock star when you pull that out and try to use it all right so I finished her look I'm taking that first section all right and I'm going to just take it to behind the ear all right so now I'm just sectioning it out so I got that first section and it's just behind the ear like this okay now I'm going to take the next section and I'm going to mimic the exact same thing to just behind the ear. I'll take it off, like I'm going to show you guys the sectioning in one moment. Just like so. So you can see both are sections. Wherever you want your part line to be, that's fine. All right. So now we're going to bring this back and down. So I have these two sections out and now I have this whole back section. So we have our natural texture in here and I'm just gonna have a little bit of fun with this. I'm gonna really play around with it. So I'm just going to grab an elastic. This time I'm just gonna use it straight up because I don't mind if it's loose. I'm not looking for a super sleek look. As I'm doing this, I just wanna remind you, all of the products that I'm talking about today, the hot tools, the, the actual Redken products, everything, this is all from Chatters. So you can get to your salon, the Chatters hair salon, and be able to purchase all of these. Or if in your area the salon is closed and you're in lockdown, you can go online at any time at chatters.ca and all of our products are there. Everything that we're talking about. And on top of that, I just have to say, their support staff is amazing. So you have a question on there, you just dot it in and they'll be able to answer you right away. Okay, so here we go. So we got the ponytail in here. This is looking great. I love it. I'm going to like pull out a couple pieces just to give it that like romantic tousled look. Now I'm thinking like a hair engineer right now. I want to have a little bit of hold in this. So what could you use to make sure those pieces stay holding? You can use your Forceful 23 if you want a stronghold. If you want it to be light and airy, you can use your Fashion Work 12. I'm going to use a little Forceful 23. All right. I'm going to grab my other elastic because I'm going to need this for the next part. I'm just putting that around my wrist. So now I'm going to take one section. And this is super easy, one section at a time. And all I'm going to do is a two-stranded braid. Now you, see, you think I'm doing a braid, but it really isn't. It's just basically like a rope braid. You're gonna take your two strands and you're gonna give it a little spin and put them together. A little spin and put them together. A little spin and put them together. Now don't stress, if you see this and you're like, I can never do that, do something that you're comfortable with. If you wanna just bring it back, not do the spin, you just wanna do more of a twist, do that as well. This is all easy. This is where you can be creative and try your own thing. If you want to be a little more adventurous and you want to try a braid, do a braid. It's fantastic. So while that's sitting there, I'm going to take the clip out of that one section and I'm going to hold it in spot. All right, you guys see? Perfect. Now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side as well. So because I twisted on that side, I'm just going to twist on this side as well. Now when you twist, it's important to like twist in the motion that you're doing it this in. Same thing, if you're gonna braid your hair, you wanna braid it in the motion. If I braid it down or twist it down like this, when I go back, you can see how you kind of get that ripple effect. You wanna either braid or twist in the way that the hair is going to, to lay. So then you don't have any of that ripple effect. So now I brought it right to the back here, okay? Because I've already prepped the hair with guts, it has a good pliable texture. So you don't have to worry about the hair falling out for anybody who's wondering how those twists hold. As well as, I'm gonna put a little bit of Fashion Work 12 in there just to manipulate the hair itself afterwards. Now this is where it can get really cute. So I have both of these pieces. I'm gonna spin this right around so you guys can see. And I want my team to tell me that you can still see it. I'm just gonna bend down low here. And what I'm gonna do is tie this into a knot. Just a really easy tie, just like so. Can everybody see that? Awesome. Now I'm gonna take it again, and I'm gonna tie it again. 
If you can only do one, that is fine, don't worry. It looks still super cute with it tied as well. Do you guys need me to do that once more so you can see? I'll do it just really fast here. So you're gonna take both sections. Remember, if these are braids or these are twists, it doesn't matter. It's super easy. You're gonna take that and you're gonna tie it just like you're tying a bow. So first one, ta-da. And if that's all you can do, leave it. It looks super cute. But in this case, she has extra hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. So as if I'm tying her hair into a knot. Now don't worry, it's not gonna stay that way. You're gonna be able to do your, undo your hair afterwards. Now with those two sections, I just brought it around to the back. And now this is where I'm gonna use a regular elastic and I'm just gonna secure off those two sections, just like so. Now I, I've grabbed a larger elastic. What I suggest is you could use one of those tiny little ouchless ones. Cause there's a lot of elastic. <laughs> Alrighty. There we go. So now you have this cute knotted look on top of already a ponytail. Now, if this is like romantic enough for you and you love this natural texture, then go for it. If you want to vamp it up, feel free by pulling out some of these pieces. Now, if you notice, I put in like um, Fashion Work 12, that helps to give me a little bit more of that grip. Same with having the Guts 10. So you can go ahead and just pull some of these out. It just gives like that soft romantic look. All right, I'm gonna spray this down with the, I'm gonna spray this down with a little forceful 12. Now what's really cute, because you put this knotted look in here, you can vamp it up with some fun accessories. You can add anything in there. It adds great. And if you have any like um, highlights or anything in your hair, her hair's all dark. So it gives it a really fun look. You can add shine flash to really show the definition off of that knot off. If you have balayage or anything in your hair, those multiple colors look gorgeous. Now I'm wrapping up this last look and I'm gonna glam it up. So I'm asking you guys if you have any questions, throw it in our question line because you only have me for a couple, I think even less than a couple minutes left. And I'm just gonna do this. Oh yes, sparkle time. <laughs> So I'm gonna bring her back around. I wanna vamp this up. Now how cute is this? Adding a little bit of sparkle, just going in and around this spot here. Imagine if you were wearing like super cute earrings, how adorable that would look. You don't have to necessarily coat the whole entire head. You can just do it in some key spots, just like so. I feel like Picasso right now. <laughs> and you can have just like a really cute look with having that in the sides. Or remember our slick back ponytail and we had um, the elastic covered by hair? Well, this one's the cute knot. How about we put a little bit of the sparkles on the knot itself? And it almost looks like you have a hair accessory in instead of it actually being your hair. I'm in love. I love doing this. Everybody's getting sparkles after this. <laughs> All right, I think I have one quick question here. Perfect. Oh, the name of the gel. I want to just, it's gone back to our Redken Bruise, our Grip Tight. I'll make sure to hold this nice and close so Mike can get a really good zoom in on it. It's just our Grip Tight from Redken Bruise. Oh, he's asking me to bring it down here. There we go. It's great. You can get this at chatters.ca. Super easy. It'll be mailed right to you. And like I said, it's just everyday sparkles that I just kind of threw in there. I personally used, uh, because of my hairstyles, this is a color bowl with a color brush to brush it in, but you can use really any paintbrush. Perfect. There we go. We've glammed up our hair. She has that great holiday style. She even has it in the knot in her ponytail, guys. This was so much fun. I had a blast doing this masterclass with you today. 
Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great two hours. Remember, everything you saw today is sold at Chatters and also you can get it online at chatters.ca. We will keep checking our messages and this will be live on YouTube. So if you have any more questions, make sure to put it down and we will answer and make sure to subscribe. So next time we have any of these happening, you will see it guys. It's been a great day. I wish you guys all really well. And I just wanna say a special thanks to the back team from Chatters. We got Mike from 20, from 20 Valley. <laughs> He's doing all the camera work. We have Jessica, who's my girl. She's just my girl, it's amazing. We got Nat, who is here at Lola Bean Studios. And we got the amazing Lindsay, who's backstage on the computer, making sure we're doing our jobs correctly. <laughs> all right, guys, have yourself a great day. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>